Hi everyone, in today's video, I'm going to be showing you the method through which you can create short keys to menu items. So if I press the short key, then it's going to go ahead and launch that menu item that I have selected. I am also going to show you how you can add icons to your menu items like these. So if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. All right, welcome back. Let's get started. So I'm just going to rerun the script that only has the short key. So in order to create a short key, you've just got to add the ampersand sign here, as you can see in front of the character that you want to convert into a short key for that option. So option one will have the key one as the short key option two, key two. So as you can see, the these short keys will be underlined. The option three will have the short key of letter O and it also works for parent menu as well. So if I go ahead and press the M key, then it's going to open up the child menu within the parent menu. And in this instance, I can also go and press M again to bring up the grandchild menu. And let me go ahead and press number two in order to launch the grandchild two menu item. So that's how you can create and use the short keys. Now, if you, you if you go down or up, you can navigate up and down the menu items as well as if you go to a parent menu and press the right key, then you'll be able to uh, bring up the child menu as well. I'm not sure if you knew that already, but that's an option. So basically, if you bring up the menu now, instead of going uh, down by pressing the down arrow, you can simply just press one of these uh, short keys in order to do what you want to do. Okay, so that kind of saves you from having to click the menu items with your mouse cursor. So it's kind of like hotkey within a hotkey in order to do things. Now, before we move on to adding the icon, I just wanted to show you that you can actually create a menu item like this. It can be anything. And if you go down and create a label that matches exactly the menu item, then you don't actually have to add a label at the end like that. So by running this, let me just go ahead and rerun the script. By clicking this last item, name has to match label for short key. Uh, mind you, you have to make sure that the label also has the ampersand sign if you have a short key for that label. So if I go ahead and press this, uh, button or the menu item, then it's going to display this message box you see here. So this is the label, which is tied to uh, this menu item right here. So that is some trick that you can use if you uh, if you want to uh, create a label that follows the menu item. Right. So uh, another thing, if you want to use the if statement and check whether the selected menu item is equal to something. If you have the short key, make sure you do put in the ampersand sign in order to exactly match that menu item. Otherwise, it won't work. All right, so let's move on to the icon. So here is the script for creating the icon. So let me just open up the menu. And so here are some example menu items with different icons, as you can see here. So in order to add an icon to a menu item, so once you add the menu item, you simply just copy and paste it, but change the add to icon. And then the this parameter here, a underscore auto -archive path is the is the path to the auto -archive file executables file. So if I just run it, then you'll see that it's pointing to the auto -archive executable file. And number one means index number one. So executable files usually have icon files in them. And so if you provide the path to the executable file and the index reference, then it's going to pick that icon file that matches the index reference. So with the auto -archive executable file, you've got five. Um, but if you say picked number one, then you're going to get the standard auto -archive icon. Number two is going to give you a different one, so on and so forth like that. So you can also use other program, other executable programs as well. So I've got a, a, a new line here to add a line break. And then 
it this one points to Chrome as you can see it, it this is pointing to the Chrome executable file so you can see how when I provided an index number of one then it will show the Chrome icon but if you provide an index number whereby the icon num icon for that index number does not exist then you're going to get a blank like that and then afterwards I've got this one right here followed by shell 32 dll this is a dll file so this should come uh, when when you installed um, windows so if i go shell 32 here that is exactly the file that we're looking at and if i go back to the icon so this is um this is a file that contains a lot of icon files so i've randomly picked five of them so if i go ahead and run it and you'll see the standard windows icons like this being added to the menu item there's another file called image resource dll within the same folder and those will have different kind of icons now here is another thing that i wanted to quickly show you you can actually add a color to the menu items it doesn't look very nice if i launch it I'll get the menu items colored differently in yellow and this is the yellow color hex code uh, but like you have seen just now it's not that nice so I normally don't add color to the menu so the last one that I'm going to show you is the custom icon as you can see this is my custom icon you can also create custom icons and, and have it have it added to a menu item like that so let me just quickly show you you've just got to create an ixo file which is an icon file so i'm just going to use this as an example i'm just going to take a screenshot of that and save it as random and then the file should have been saved to my desktop and so how you convert it to ICO is to simply just uh, rename the file to .ico and then I'm going to move this to my folder where the script is saved and you basically just have to point to it and that will do. So if I go rerun, rerun the script and bring up the menu again then you can see how the, the icon has changed including the yellow background, the yellow circle around my mouse cursor. Um, if this doesn't work, then there is a website that helps you convert your icon file into a proper icon file. So image file into a proper icon file. Let me just quickly show you that website. So here is the here is the website. Don't have to use this one, but this website basically allows you to upload an image file and it will convert it into a proper a proper ICO file in case if you converted it yourself by renaming the extension but it didn't work um, with regards to these ones there is actually a script that uh, that I found before which I'm gonna hopefully I can find it okay here is, here is a script um, I don't know where I got it from I can't remember where I got it from but this script basically goes through all the icon files within the shell dot shell 32 and image resource dot dll files and so you can see how there's a whole bunch of icons in these files I think there's like 300 more than 300 I think that's it so 329 for shell 32 with the index reference for the icon files as well as the image resources so if I click that I think the radio button doesn't update for whatever reason um, but the icons have changed so you can see how you can refer to uh, this script when you're trying to find uh, what icon file you want to use for the menu items I'll upload this like I said I can't remember where I got it from so I don't have the URL that links to this uh, script so I'll just upload it onto my website. This is it for today's video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.